the way that as children we're provided for on like a physical or like emotional level shapes the way that we expect other people to like provide for us in our social interactions the rest of our lives, right? So if you've got like a child who's like in a very like nourishing, you know, loving family that's just like always heaping on like sort of emotional sort of praise and that sort of thing, the child might like grow up like craving that sort of thing. If you have a family that's like really distant and isolated, not really sharing a sort of emotional bonds or, or touch or that sort of thing, that child might grow up like not expecting those things the rest of those, their lives, right? So there are four basic categories. And this honestly, guys, this is, I talk about this with folks like all the time because this is like super relevant to a lot of like couples. Uh, the, so the first, the first style is anxious. So people with the anxious attachment style think highly of others, but often have low self-esteem. They pl tend to blame themselves for rejection or for people failing to respond to their needs. They need constant reassurance that they are loved, worthy, or good enough for love. They can be clingy, desperate, and preoccupied with relationships. They can be jealous and suspicious of their partners and they can rarely be alone, right? Now, like that, that might sound rough, but it's like, but you probably fit into one of these, right? So let's keep going. Avoidant people. Parents might have avoided signs of intimacy and love. So avoidant adults might tend towards independence, self-reliance, high self-esteem and control. They tend to avoid displays of intimacy and closeness especially closing themselves off when relationships can get more serious. It can be hard to develop a close relationship with them. Disorganized people have a high need for intimacy, but are fearful of it. They need intimacy, but they're scared of it, right? They experience rejection as inevitable. And so they will often sabotage their own relationships or choose partners will feed into the fear of the relationship is going to fail, right? And then the fourth one is secure. So a person with secure attachment styles is able to regulate emotions in a relationship, is good at healthy intimacy and expectations, has good levels of self-esteem and respect for others, and can give and seek emotional support and can reflect on where their, the relationship is at, etc. right? So, Here's, here's the thing that's interesting about this is, right? So you tend, like probably everybody here, the major two are the anxious and avoidant, is you tend towards either like not really needing a lot of like emotional support and therefore being kind of scared of it or needing a great deal and therefore being kind of clingy. Or you fall into the one that's just like the sort of like, fearful, always like sabotaging their own relationships, right? But the thing is like, like the way that you come to expect relationships to be also makes you seek those things. So the disorganized style will often seek people that are going to hurt them because they expect relationships to be painful. And if they found somebody that didn't, it wouldn't feel like a relationship to them. And anxious and avoidant actually tend to seek each other, right? <laughs> Which, this is what you run into a lot, is like, you suddenly think to yourself like, uh, or it's especially when, when things like escalate in a relationship, like the first time you meet their parents, the first time you like want to call it like boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, the first time you go on like a really intense, serious date, you know, uh, when you're getting close to engagement, when like, you know, it becomes a more public relationship or something like that. The avoidant tends to freak out and take steps back because they're scared of like intimacy. And when the anxious person sees that, they tend to like, get super clingy and like super deep in, right? So like if you've had a relationship where suddenly it feels like the other person is like, is like 
ghosting you or like not talking to you or being like suddenly very closed, like not wanting to talk about deep things, shrugging things off, they might tend towards avoidant, right? I myself, I kind of tend more towards avoidant on this whole thing. It's like sometimes deeper intimacy is a little bit scary to me and I have to take it slow, right? Some people, like in a relationship, you might have somebody who's like, they get start to get a little bit nervous and so they start getting super clingy and start talking about really intimate stuff and like wanna ratchet up the relationship a bunch of more levels. It's because they're seeking like the assurance, right? So again, the reason why we're talking about this today is because like, this is already part of you. You might not be crazy one of these, very few people are, but it's like, you probably tend in one direction or the other. And you wanna kinda of know that walking into the relationship to know like, yeah, I can be scared of intimacy. And if I feel that like runaway instinct, like it's okay, don't run away, you know? Or you might say to yourself, yeah, I might really crave like attention and like commitment, but just because the other person's not ready to give it to me doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the relationship. It's just that I'm craving it more quickly than they're willing to give, you know? If you're, if you're constantly sabotaging your relationships, if you're choosing people that you know are going to hurt you or reject you in some way, that'd be a good thing to know, right? Like, that'd be a good thing to start. And like all these things, we can tend all of them towards secure. Like we can actually grow in this and get to a place where we're secure in our attachment style and be totally fine. But like, it's only through like self-knowledge and working on yourself and sometimes even like therapy or like couples counseling that we can kind of get to that point. So boundaries, it's kind of having a healthy understanding of, of who I am, of what I can and want to do in the light of other people's expectations of me. So people who have bad boundaries might either A, like, be super manipulative of others and super demanding of others and constantly getting other people to do what they want or like I was like super easy to be manipulated because I was constantly just like giving, giving, giving without like any decent sense of like, no, that's a crazy inappropriate thing for you to ask of me. Right. I want you to imagine that like you and a friend are planning on going and doing something together. And that friend says, Oh, I really want to go and see such and such a movie. Right. And you're like, in your mind, you're like, I do not want to see that movie. Right. But like, not just like, I kind of don't want to see that movie, but I like really don't want to see that movie. You know what I mean? If you didn't have healthy boundaries, you might kind of say just to yourself, like, well, that's all right. Just suck it up and do it. Do what they want to do to try to make them happy. And you'd go and see the movie, despite the fact that you really didn't want to. Right. Which like doesn't sound that bad. But if you do that for your whole life, it creeps up on you, <laughs> right? Um, or if you didn't have healthy boundaries, you might say like, no, you and I are going to see this movie, like, and list some other movie, right? But like a really good kind of health of, uh, healthy sense of boundaries would be more along the lines of like, actually, I'd really like to see this movie. So maybe I can see my movie and you can see your movie and like, we can both just be okay with that. And neither one of us will feel threatened or like the relationship is on the rocks because we went and saw different movies. Do you see how it's like, it's like a balance of what, of what your expectations are versus what other people expect of you. And that's kind of a dumb example, but like, and if you live a life where you're just like constantly like succumbing to what other people expect you to be or who they want you to be or what they kind of like imagine you to be, then like, you kind of lose track of who you are. And it leads to that kind of like deep sort of resentment, right? So like a healthy sense of self is something, somebody that like you can be cool with other people doing other things and thinking other things of you and you being who you want to be and thinking certain things about yourself and realizing that, that it's okay if those things don't necessarily jive, right? So like a good like Father Father McCullough is a good friend of mine, uh, Father Alex McCullough. He's down in Cincinnati, and uh, he'll he'll do like 
like invitations like this. He'll call you up and he'll say, listen, I'm planning on going golfing Tuesday evening. He likes to golf. He's a good golfer, whereas I am not. He doesn't actually invite me to go golfing because I'm such a bad golfer. But <laughs> this is how he does invitations nonetheless. I'm, in, I'm going to go golfing like this evening or Tuesday evening. You know, so and so and so and so are coming with me. I would love it if you came with me, but you also don't have to. Like, feel free not to, but you'd be welcome to show up if you wanted to come. You know, like with this sense of like, I don't need you to come, but I would love to see you. Does that make sense? So if you imagine a scale of like zero, where you're like totally enslaved to keeping other people happy and doing exactly what they expect of you, and 100 of just like not giving a, a rip about what anybody thinks about you ever, like you kind of want to be like around 70%. Because 100% not giving a rip about what anybody else thinks of you makes you a, a sociopath, like legitimately, right? The kind of person who doesn't give anything, doesn't give a care about other, what other people expect of them are the sort of people that goes around and hurts a lot of other people, right? You want to have, but you want to have like a really healthy sense of like, of who you are, of who you want to be, of like what your values are without like succumbing to what other people kind of expect you to be. That's the sort of thing where it's good to like develop healthy boundaries or at least to know where those boundaries are before you enter into a relationship because that way it helps with rejection where it's like when you get rejected, it's not like suddenly your whole life is falling apart because you had a healthy sense of who you were, you know, like, and it also helps just with like in balancing, like growing in intimacy as a couple, having a healthy sense of who you are and what what is okay to give and what's not okay to give yet.